G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel for another edition of my Power Rankings. Doing this at a kind of odd segment in the year. Uh, I did the first one after three rounds and the second one after six rounds. I'd like to keep up that three round pace, but we'll see. I've got some holidays booked up. This is an incredibly hard year to do it. It's always tough to do Power Rankings, trying to plot how well teams are going in terms of their form and how likely they are to win the flag, but also trying to pay respect to how good some teams' form has without uh, trying to overreact, if that makes sense. But with all the intrigue around this year and, and unexpected teams doing well, it's harder than ever, I think, to do a power rankings, but I've had a crack because I like doing it anyway. So I'll go with the usual format, guys. I'll plot my 18 teams from the best team in the competition on current form to the 18th best side in the competition. Again, it's a little bit arbitrary. It's not simply a form rankings. It's trying to weight in past performance to some extent, if that past performance is still relevant to a side in terms of evaluating them as a premiership contender. Like I said, it's heavily changed from the opening first three weeks of the, of the season because certain teams have consolidated their form and they've earned my respect to an even greater extent. And some sides that I backed in have completely fallen off the perch, but we'll get into all of that. As always, guys, we are sponsored by Manscaped.com. For all your male grooming needs, head to Manscaped.com. Have a little browse. They've got some great products available for you. The Lawnmower 4.0 is their body hair trimmer, which gets the job done quickly and easily and safely because it's got a ceramic blade to reduce grooming accidents. And you can also get a heap of other stuff like colognes and boxes and ball moisturizers and all that stuff. With TrueFooty, you get 20% off by using the code TrueFooty20 at checkout, and you also get free shipping. So do yourselves a favor, do your balls a favor, do the channel a favor if you need the products by checking them out and using the discount code. Enjoy. So let's crack into it. The best team in the competition right now, uh, I think indisputably is the Collingwood Footy Club, who are second on the ladder currently with a record of five wins and one loss. They've gone four and one in their last five. And the teams they've beaten have been Port Adelaide, Richmond, St Kilda, Essendon and Geelong. So some fairly good heavy hitters in that list. Obviously their one loss of the year came against the Brisbane Lions at the Gabba. I don't weigh that too heavily against them. They're the best side in the comp. I'm still going to go with Melbourne as the second best side in the comp. They sit third with a 4-2 record. Again, waiting in the fact that we know that they're a genuine contender on previous year's form, but the teams they've beaten this year have been the Bulldogs, Richmond, Sydney and the Eagles. And they lost to two other good sides in Brisbane and Essendon, but again, it's not enough for me to have them drop down my rankings. Shooting up to third spot is the top team in the competition right now, St Kilda, as the third seeded side in the comp right now. What a journey it's been for them to uh, really shatter expectations so far this year with a heavy injury list. The sides that they've beaten have been pretty solid. They've beaten the Bombers in recent weeks. Their one loss this season has been a six point loss to Collingwood, who I rank as the best side in the competition. So St Kilda haven't put a foot wrong for me, and I'm getting increasingly confident we'll see them play finals this year. I've still got Brisbane as my fourth best side in the competition and they sit sixth on the ladder. They've had two good wins this season over both Collingwood and Melbourne at the Gabba which I think weights heavily into their chances to finish top four. Uh, their two losses this year have been against the Dog and Port both away from home which is something they probably need to answer that question a little bit but very strong Gabba side very strong track record of good performances over a number of years. They're still pretty much in the mix as they have been in the last few years. I've got Geelong shooting back into fifth, largely on the back of their huge 93 point win against the side that we considered a premiership contender not too long ago in the Sydney Footy Club. Yes, they had a poor 0-3 start to the season, but we don't want to overreact because I think it was probably just a form slump, a slow start to the season. Since then, they've beaten the Hawks and Eagles. I don't know how much you count towards that, but the huge win over Sydney and the confidence and ability that they're playing with and the fact that they're reigning premiers means they're at least fifth for me. I've got Essendon in sixth, and this really demonstrates how far they've come as a side as well with some really strong performances in the last few weeks. Some really good performances lately with a good win over the Demons in Adelaide and then a narrow loss where they probably should have beaten Collingwood on Anzac Day, but they've come a long way, so they shoot up into the top six for me. I've got Sydney plummeting a little bit, um, and I know that they've got some injury issues at the moment, but still a 93-point loss to the reigning premiers was not a great showing for them. It's been a really patchy month or so. Again, injuries are a factor, but they lost to Melbourne quite heavily. They lost to Geelong extremely heavily, and they lost to Port Adelaide. So they're bleeding a little bit. I do back them in to come back, and if they get some players back, we'll probably see them shoot up the rankings, but their form has been indifferent. I've got Adelaide cracking my top eight now. Uh, they sit fifth with four and two. They've beaten the Dockers, Port, Hawthorne and the Blues. So not a massively strong run of play teams that they've beaten so far this year, although their win over Carlton was incredibly impressive. They've also lost to GWS and Richmond, so it's a bit of a mixed bag, although I do think their best football can easily play finals. In ninth spot, this might be a little bit harsh, but I've got Port Adelaide just out of my top eight. It's not because I think they've dropped in my estimations, it's just that I've kind of recalibrated my top eight and I have them just outside it. They've had some good wins lately with wins over the Bulldogs and Sydney, but of course that big loss to Adelaide 
uh, by five goals in the showdown made it very, very difficult for me to put them above Adelaide. So that's the way the cookies crumble for Port. Next, I've got the Blues sliding down the rankings with some indifferent form in recent weeks. Obviously, that big loss to Adelaide, the most alarming one. They also lost to the Saints by about three or four goals. So in the three weeks since I've done this video, they've lost a handful of games. They just haven't quite looked like they've had the same oomph that they did at the start to the year. And frankly, some other teams have just gone ahead with them. In 11th spot, I've got the Western Bulldogs around about where I had them before. They've had a reasonable last five rounds with uh, three wins and two losses. And they've beaten some struggling teams. They did beat the Brisbane Lions, which was a good effort and they've beaten Fremantle in Perth, and they've beaten Richmond. And I do think that they've played quite well in those games, but for me, I haven't done enough to really rise up my rankings. Then in 12th spot, I've got Richmond, who sits 16th on the ladder with just one win and one draw from six attempts. The one win this year has been admittedly a good win in Adelaide against the Crows, and they've lost to the Bulldogs, the Swans, the Demons and the Pies in that time. So a pretty tough fixture, you would say. I do expect as their fixture gets easier, we may see them rise up these rankings a little bit. But on current form, if you've won one win this season, 12th is pretty generous. In 13th spot, I've got the struggling Fremantle Footy Club who just lost the home game by 50 points to the Western Bulldogs, and I'm sure even their fans agree. This is probably about right there. Pretty far off the finals race at the moment with just two wins this year coming against the Eagles and the Gold Coast Suns and losses against the Dogs, Crows, Saints, and even North Melbourne. So this is about right for Fremantle. Then we've got the Gold Coast Suns who had a bit of a tension relieving win over North Melbourne, although I don't think North is in the greatest patch of form right now. So they're two and four with two wins against the Cats and North Melbourne. But I do acknowledge that their losses have come against some tough opponents in the Bombers, the Swans, the Saints, and the Freo Dockers. I've got North Melbourne sliding back to 15th in these rankings after a pretty patchy run of form lately, most recently with a seven gold loss to the Gold Coast Suns. And they haven't won a game since they beat the Eagles and the Dockers in the opening two rounds. So they lost four in the trot. They've looked a little bit average. Maybe they're just tired. But either way, you lose four in a row, you're going to drop down the rankings. In 16th spot, I've got the GWS Giants, who amazingly sit 12th on the ladder despite being 2-4, and four, but the percentage is pretty strong. They've had wins over Adelaide and Hawthorne, beating the Crows in Round 1 and Hawthorne most recently in Round 6. They've lost to the Eagles, they've lost to the Blues, and then Bombers and Lions are pretty strong sides as well. So are they better than North Melbourne at the moment? Possibly, but I probably need more data to really elevate them. In 17th spot, I've actually got Hawthorne over my club. Uh, who currently sit 18th on the ladder, but have had two really good showings in the last couple of weeks, almost beating Adelaide and almost beating GWS. Their one winner this year came against North Melbourne, and that's why I have them ahead of West Coast, whose one win this year came against the Giants. And admittedly, injuries are a big factor in this, and while I think there's some encouraging signs from the Eagles from a fan perspective, we're still losing games by 10 to 7 goals over the last month, so I can't really hold too much space for them from an injury perspective. Probably the 18th side in the competition on current form right now, although I do think the gap between 18th and 15th is closer than it would be in previous years. Anyway guys, that is my crack at some power rankings. Let me have it in the comments. What do you think I got right? What do you think I got wrong? There's going to be some controversial ones. I know I wanted to fit more teams into my top eight because I think we've got at least 11 to 12 finals contenders still going right now. As always guys, I look forward to your input. Let me know in the comments. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.